This nine-year-old girl had a pregnant belly. At night, she would have severe pains in her stomach and vomit every day. The parents immediately sent their daughter to the hospital, but the test results showed that the girl's body had no problems, only lactose intolerance. The doctor said she would be fine if she paid attention to her diet, so the family returned home with peace of mind. But after dinner, the daughter was rolling around in bed. She cried out in pain. The parents took their daughter to another hospital. The girl's pain gradually improved with medication to induce vomiting. After examination the doctor thought he was simply feeding esophageal reflux and that some medication would do the trick. But the mother was convinced that the diagnosis was wrong because this was the fourth hospital they had been to. She pleaded with the doctor to give her daughter another good re-examination. But the young doctor in front of her was very firm in his diagnosis and hoped that the other side would not delay him as he had many patients to see behind him. Excuse me, this is not acid reflux. She's not lactose intolerant. There's there's something wrong with our little girl. Mrs. Beam, you need to calm no, down. No, you, you calm down. You find me another doctor, you run some more tests. I'm not leaving this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter. The hospital then sent an experienced veteran doctor, who found that the girl's intestines were partially knotted, so that the food she ate could not be digested and kept accumulating in her abdomen. That's why Anna's stomach was getting bigger and bigger and now needed immediate surgery to remove the blockage. The mother was saddened to see a catheter nearly one meter long shoved into her daughter's nose. After the surgery, the doctors brought the even more unfortunate news that Anna was suffering from a rare digestive disorder. There is no effective treatment in the world, and the only way to relieve the condition is to not eat and to rely on the tube to feed nutritional fluids. This is too cruel to Anna, who is only nine years old. Almost, almost, almost hurts, mommy. Oof. What's even crueler is that it won't last long, and in two years, she'll be gone forever. Sarah couldn't stop crying. She couldn't bear to see her daughter suffer. She had heard that a pediatrician in Boston could treat this condition, but he had been unable to get an appointment for weeks. Until the day her eldest daughter asked her mother if Anna was going to die, Sarah decided she couldn't wait any longer and took Anna to Boston the next day. But as soon as they entered the hospital, they were stopped by the triage desk. No matter how hard Sarah pleaded, it was to no avail. She had to leave with her daughter, disappointed. But just a day later, the specialist who was informed of the situation called. He first did a gastroscopy on Anna, but the results were as bad as ever, leaving Sarah in despair again. But the specialist did not give up. He said that although there is no cure for this disease, but he can use drugs to reduce the patient's pain. In this way, Sarah stayed in the hospital. The huge daily expenses not only made them mortgage the house, even her father's favorite motorcycle, Harry was sold, but for several months, Anna's condition did not improve, but became worse and worse. She had to take painkillers every day to sleep. Despite the pain and suffering, Anna believed that God was with her. Not only did she stay optimistic and strong every day, she also gave her favorite cross to her little sister in the same ward, hoping to bring peace and strength to her cancer silent. But the girl's father gently called Sarah outside, because he didn't want Anna to transmit God's business to his daughter. I don't know what made Anna do that, but I am certain that she didn't mean any harm by it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that she didn't. It's not really our thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I just don't want anyone to give a false hope. A few days later, the ward was left to Anna alone. After one failed treatment after another, Anna also finally lost her temper and had a heated argument with her mother. She even told her mother. I'm gonna die. Annabelle. I want to go to heaven where there's no pain. I want baby if you went to heaven. You want to be with, with me and daddy anymore and you want to leave a hole in my heart. I'm sorry, mommy. I don't want to make you sad. I, I just want it to be over. Seeing her daughter in such pain, her mother was also suffering. How she wished the illness was in her own body. Anna became more and more reticent. She didn't want to communicate with anyone. But when her father brought his siblings to the hospital, Anna smiled like she hadn't smiled in a long time. The sound of their playfulness brought life and joy back to the hospital room. 
as the treatment in the hospital did not improve Anna's condition. In order to take care of their daughter's emotions, they decided to go home to recuperate, not wanting her sister to stay depressed like this. The sister took Anna to play soccer as usual, but Anna stopped in front of a big tree, because they often played the game of climbing trees before. Looking at her sister's eager eyes, she encouraged her not to be afraid. With permission, Anna quickly climbed up the tree. As usual, the two sisters sat on the branch and admired the view in the distance. The smile returned to Anna's face. The sickness seemed to disappear at that moment. Just then, the branch suddenly made a clicking sound. Sister told Anna to run back, but a huge hole had formed in the center of the trunk. Anna fell down, and the depth inside was as high as a three-story building. Sister hurriedly jumped down the tree and called for her parents. The father called out his daughter's name anxiously towards the tree hole, but there was no response from inside. Subsequently, the firefighters also quickly rushed over, but because the tree is hollow, if cut down is likely to collapse over Anna. They had to call the crane, so that a relatively small team members hanging upside down into. But the difficulty of rescue is still very large. Has been three hours, people still cannot be fished out. Reporters are still reporting the situation nervously on the sidelines. Almost desperate mother hugged the tree and cried. She devoutly prayed to God to bless her daughter safe and sound. At this time, the father also came over. The family all gathered around the tree and prayed. After exactly five hours, Anna was finally rescued. Looking at the bruised and battered daughter, her mother was heartbroken. Afterwards, Anna was rushed to the hospital for treatment. The parents waited anxiously outside the emergency room all night, and a miracle really happened. I uh, don't know how to say this, but other than the possibility of a slight concussion, your daughter has no broken bones complete movement of all her limbs, there's no internal bleeding, no indication of bruising. In fact, after hitting the ground skull first with dirt pack to the top of her head, she regained consciousness, woke up with a smile on her face. <laughs> the parents also found it unbelievable, as if something had really blessed their daughter. After the accident, Anna was not only more active than ever, but her mother was surprised to find that she was no longer taking painkillers and that her belly was miraculously getting smaller. The mother rushed to call her husband and they brought their daughter to Boston to have her examined again by a specialist. The results showed that Anna's stomach and intestines were functioning perfectly normally, which even the specialist found incredible. He could only describe what was happening to Anna as a miracle. Sarah cried tears of joy when she learned of the results. Only those who have been through this know how difficult it was for her to go through this journey. When she returned home. Anna recounted what had happened to her in the hole in the tree. She fell unconscious and saw two of herself. She was taken by a butterfly to a very beautiful place. There were green trees, birds and flowers, and Anna ran through them to her heart's content. At the end she met God. Anna said she wanted to stay here, but God told her he had other things planned for him in the human world. And so, the girl returned to her loving family. Anna also regained her former lively and lovely. You'll think it's ridiculous after watching it. This is just a nice religious movie, but this is a true story. At the end of the movie, at the end of the movie, when Sarah was sharing her daughter's experience in the church to give hope to other patients, some people in the audience raised questions. They thought Anna's illness might not be as serious as it was portrayed. But just then, a man who had never been a believer stepped forward. I saw Anna in the hospital. She was gravely ill. So much so that I wasn't sure she was going to make it out. I've never been a religious person, but my beautiful daughter died recently. Her name was Haley, and she was 10. She had cancer, and she suffered a great deal. But the last few weeks of her life were different. She felt, she felt safe, she felt loved, and she felt that way because Anna gave her faith. She gave her peace. In 2015, mother, published a book with her daughter's story. It describes in detail the entire process of Anna's diagnosis, medical treatment and distress and cure. The plot of the film is also largely based on the original story. There are many things in the world that science cannot explain. Perhaps this is to give people in desperate situations a hope to live. Although miracles do not always happen, but love is always around us.